Some people found this new movie boring because there was nothing new about it but I have to say the special effects are awesome and news that will surprise exactly nobody. I didn't like this remake of The Lion King. I historically haven't liked any of the recent Disney live action remakes, but I dislike this one for reasons that are different to why I didn't like the others. But first, it's important to note that I was never on the hype train for the original version of The Lion King. Sure, it's a wonderfully enjoyable movie with a killer soundtrack, but it wasn't notably better than any of the other films from that era of the Disney Renaissance. It had all the usual problems found in those movies. Odd pacing, a savvy middle, and supporting characters and villains that ended up far more interesting than the main character. But it was still very well done, featured some stellar animation, and was full of heart. All of what made the original Lion King a classic is gone in this photorealistic CGI remake. I refuse to call it a live action remake because none of this movie was filmed live. It was all done in the computer so it's every bit as animated as the original version was, just with a different form of animation. Instead, we're left with some pretty impressive looking CGI animals that are devoid of any life or heart in the movie that hews so closely to the original that it begs the question, why bother making this at all? The Lion King, written by Jeff Nathanson, directed by John Favreau, from Disney Live Action, director John Favreau's all knew The Lion King, journeys to the African savannah where a future king is born. Simba, J.D. McCrary as a child, Donald Glover as an adult, idolizes his father, King Fossa, James Earl Jones, and takes to heart his own royal destiny. But not everyone in the kingdom celebrates the new cub's arrival. Scar, Kuitl Jiafer, Fossa's brother and former heir to the throne has plans of his own. The battle for Pride Rock is ravaged with betrayal, tragedy and drama, ultimately resulting in Simba's exile. With help from a curious pair of Newfoundland friends, Seth Regan and Billy Eichner, Simba will have to figure out how to grow up and take back what is rightfully his. Well, whenever you make a movie, you have to walk a pretty fine line. You don't want to change too much because then it might cease to be recognizable as the thing you're making. But you also don't want it to be too slavish to the source material because then it feels like there was no point in making the remake. This is a conversation we end up having with every Disney live action remake, but usually, it's because whatever changes they've made have been poorly executed slash not particularly well thought out. In Aladdin, for example, the changes they made to Jasmine's storyline stuck out like a sore thumb because they were never fully executed and, instead, felt like lazy, half-paid ideas coupled with a new song that didn't sound similar to any of the other songs in the movie. In The Lion King, we have to have this conversation because the film changed so little from the original movie that it's an honest crime that the original screenwriters aren't credited as writing this movie as the script is 95% the original script and 5% lines that were 80 lived by Billy Eichner and Seth Regan. So little was changed in this remake that you often find yourself wondering why you're even bothering to watch it as it frequently fails to match the height set by the original film, which it begs comparison to as it remakes some sequences and less such. It's hard to criticize any aspect of this film story as it's exactly the same story we've already seen, with all of its problems and successes. There is some new dialogue, mostly from the hyenas, played by Eric Andre and Keepin Michael Key, and Tymon, Billy Eichner, and Pumba, Seth Regan, and two new scenes, both set in the Pride Lands between Hakuna Matata and adult Simba and Ellis, Shatterty, Red Joseph as a child, Beyond Snow's Carter as an adult, Reunion, one showing Scar as a creepy insult character who really wants Sarabi to be his wife, the other a wholly unnecessary scene showing how Nella escapes the Pride Lands to find Simba. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as the original movie that we've all already seen numerous times. Bizarrely, this remake is nearly a full half hour longer than the original but I can't identify any new material other than the previously mentioned 80 lived lines and the two or three completely disposable, and not particularly long, new scenes. Maybe the 80 living added up to a fair amount of new material, but it's so spread out that it never feels like you're watching anything substantially different to what you've already seen. And, to be fair, I understand the idea that if it's not broken, there's no need to fix it but when it comes to making a movie, if you're just gonna make the exact same movie, why make it? You should make some changes or do things a bit different, but you should also make sure those changes are well thought out, properly executed, and that they elevate the material instead of bringing it down. Lion King On what is different, of course, is the style of animation. The 94 version of The Lion King was done in traditional, hand-drawn 2D animation. This remake was done in photorealistic CGI animation. All due respect to the CGI animators who animated this remake, but the animation just doesn't work for the story. On the one hand, it is a technical marvel at how realistic these animals look throughout the entirety of the film. On the other hand, they are so realistic that every time one of them talks, your brain is immediately sent into the uncanny valley as English words just look wrong being spoken by such lifelike animals. 
We all know that real lions don't talk so our brains are unable to make that suspension of disbelief when we're looking at something that's otherwise extremely lifelike. Additionally, the extreme realism used in the facial expressions of the animals doesn't really lend itself to very expressive faces. All of the characters pretty much have the exact same expression the entire movie, whether they're happy or sad. I understand this may be realistic, although I've seen some pretty expressive animals, but it doesn't make for visually interesting characters. Especially, when some of the actors are giving fairly emotional performances while the facial expressions of their animated characters don't come anywhere near matching those emotions. It just creates a disconnect that wasn't there in the original version. This CGI is beautiful on a technical level, but on an emotional level, it's utterly cold and lifeless. You feel nothing for these animals as characters in a story because they are utterly expressionless and dead-eyed. No additionally, this realistic form of animation opened the story up to even more problems. Real animals don't sing and dance. And, because they don't sing and dance, that means that nearly every musical number had to be altered to ensure the strict adherence to realism. While Circle of Life is a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original sequence, every other musical number in the film has been substantially altered, always for the worse. I just can't wait to be king suffers the least from these alterations, mainly because the vocal performance of J.D. McCrary and Chad Hattie Wright Joseph carries the song a long way while the animation manages to still be fun, though significantly less fantastical. Hakuna Matata suffers a big more it's everything that made that sequence visually interesting is stripped away from the film and replaced with time and Pamba and Simba just jogging through the desert slash jungle. Coupled that with a vocal performance from Donald Glover, that's not particularly strong and you have an uninteresting sequence. Then, the worst offenders, be prepared and can you feel the love tonight? Be prepared, is inexplicably butchered, with half of the song getting cut and all of the visuals being changed to just Scar jumping around some rocks while yelling at the hyenas. Can you feel the love tonight is completely overhauled, changed the action to broad daylight, while still allowing the lyrics to reference the nighttime, purportedly because the realistic lighting engine made the nighttime too dark for the musical number, except that several other scenes still happened at night. Coupled that song with Donald Glover and Beyonce giving very uneven vocal performances and you have a very disappointing rendition of the song. Musically, most of the songs are fine, save for Be Prepared and Can You Feel the Love Tonight, which both suffer from some weak vocal performances, but visually, they're pretty lacking. Also, technically, Beyoncé has a new song in the film, but you hear like 30 seconds of it playing underneath the scene and it sounds nothing like any of the other music, written by Tim Rice, Elton John, and Hans Zimmer, so, it's barely worth mentioning. The Lion King speaking of vocal performances, they're equally uneven. James Earl Jones, Billy Eichner, Seth Regan, and John Oliver, Zazu, probably give the best performances out of the whole cast. James Earl Jones always sounds good and Eichner and Regan are the absolute highlights of the film as they imbue their characters with a lot of energy that just demands your attention anytime they're on screen. The rest of the cast range from just fine to not on screen enough to make an impression to utterly disappointing. J.D. McCrary and Chad Hattie Wright Joseph are great as young Simba and young Nala, each delivering performances that are far more interesting than those delivered by Donald Glover and Beyonce as the adult versions of those characters. Both Glover and Beyonce sound like they're just reading their lines without any real emotion and it just doesn't work. It makes the already boring middle of the movie even more boring and makes the climax lap tension. Kuwitl Giefer does a decent job as Scar, but he's never allowed to do anything with the role as the script is so slavishly devoted to the original film, meaning we hardly see Scar for large chunks of the movie. Keep and Michael Key and Eric Andre are utterly disappointing as the two hyenas they play. They seem to AD live most of their lines, but a significantly less success than Eibner and Regan and their humor ends up in stark contrast with the utter seriousness that Florence Kassam would portray Shanji, the other hyena, with. In the animated film, all three hyenas were a bit silly and it worked, but here, Andre and Key stick out like sore thumbs. The rest of the cast do fine jobs but they have such little screen time that it's hard to have any kind of impression on them. Not all in all, The Lion King, 2019, is disappointing. It's nearly the exact same film we've already seen, to the point of feeling utterly boring at times as you sit there and wonder why you're watching this film when you could just watch the one that already existed and is doing all of the same things only, better. The animation is equal parts impressive and utterly lifeless. Its adherence to realism creating a horrific and canny valley while robbing many of the musical numbers of their chance to be as visually interesting as they were in the original animated film. The voice cast ends up being just as mixed a bag as some actors give great performances while others, namely Donald Glover and Beyonce, give immensely disappointing ones. Couple the uneven performance with the utter lack of facial expressions of the animals and you have a group of completely uncompelling characters.
All of this adds up to a film that's not bad but is frequently boring and pales in comparison to the film it's trying to make. Having seen this movie, the only question I'm left with is why we make the film if you're gonna change so little and use animation that's inferior to the original? Why mess with what was already working just fine if you're not gonna do a better job? I already own the best version of The Lion King, and I suspect most everybody who's interested in seeing this remake does too, so I'd advise you to save $10 and just watch your DVD or Blu-ray or digital download of the original version of The Lion King instead. You'll enjoy it more. 2.5 out of 5 ones.